In this film series, we look into five Celtic port towns that are connected and intertwined by the ferry routes that serve them. To get to know the history of these routes, the wonderful wildlife and the relationships that they continue to nourish, we meet up with Welsh and Irish locals who show us how they're inspired by this fascinating crossing. Welcome to Ports Past and Present, Dublin to Hollyhead. Blasted from my side, a stone child breaks the water like a finger of fossils through the flood, holding back trouble, sea serpents and storms, cradled and battered in the mussels and the mud, and horizon beyond my great Wicklow sisters, tied to the crag of their land, freeing the rain, falling on sails, driving through and stabbing in the sand. And still, they wave goodbye. Mor daithiai. I was bred in Dublin, but I was born in Birmingham, and that's uh, really interesting because my parents in the 50s had to take the boat uh, because there was no employment here in Ireland, so they emigrated to England. Uh, as did thousands of others, um, I was born in Birmingham, but don't hold that against me. I was born in Birmingham and after a year and a half came back to uh, live in Dublin. My, both my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, unusually are all from Dublin. So it's very much uh, my town, my city, um, and it's, it's where I live and it's, it's a place I love. From here to Hollyhead is interesting for me because to me it's been a lifeline. Um, for the city, not just the city, the whole, whole of Ireland, because people gravitated towards the city to get to the port to take the boat. Um, it has connotations for me of unemployment, especially in the, as I say, the 50s and 60s and 70s. My parents had to leave Ireland in the 50s because there was no work. They emigrated, they took the boat. They found employment in, in, in Birmingham. And also the boat was used, it was the mail boat, it was the cattle boat. So it was a lifeline. People who were working um, often Husbands went away to work in England and their wives stayed at home and they mightn't get home maybe once a year and they sent their money back on the mailboat uh, through letters and stuff like that. So to me the boat signifies a connection, an ongoing connection between Ireland and, 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 and the UK. It's a crossing and it's a journey but it doesn't seem like it because it's so quick now. You know, yeah, the speed, especially from Dublin to Hollyhead, it's, it's faster than it is the other way back. And you feel yourself kind of propelled, and I mentioned that in the, in the poem. You know, you're on the boat and you, you feel the shuddering of the engines and the power of it underneath you, and you're walking around. Then you go outside and all of a sudden you realise you're being, being you know, catapulted out into the, into the bay and into Dublin. And then you look behind and you see the city that you're leaving behind. And then in an hour, an hour and a half time, you see ahead of you, you see Wales. It's, 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 it's brilliant, you know, it's, um, it's exciting. It's a great journey, actually. Yeah, you know, as you're arriving back to Dublin on the ferry, everything is in widescreen. Uh, and it, you're kind of drawn into this. It's like watching a movie and you're coming closer and closer into it. And you pick out pieces in the distance, you pick out Holt Head, you pick out Docky Island, you then coming in. And as you get closer, you're seeing Sandy Mount, you're seeing Rings End, you're seeing Rahini, you're seeing Holt Clontarf. And all of a sudden, bang, you're in and you're getting off the boat and you're home waving from the whirl of the water in the strum of the salt green sea, hauled in from Ireland, the waves curling, hurling them home to me. In a forest of masts, then of funnels, all fisherman and flying into morning, past the anchored sun, floating, the light of the sky and the sailor's warning, they sail by, a gossai. Gosh, I remember the Hollyhead in the 60s and 70s. Uh, I can remember the lowing of the cows coming off the cattle boats. Extremely happy growing up in Hollyhead. Um, uh, but it was messing about on boats all the time, nearly. Um, have you ever heard of the climber Joe Brown? Um, he was a world-famous 
climber, a Welsh climber in the 1970s, in between South Stack and North Stack at a set of cliffs. The BBC filmed it all by lowering cameramen down in cages on either side of Joe uh, climbing up. And we had a tug offshore with a film crew as well. Unfortunately, the film crew were violently seasick and no film <laughs> was produced from that tug station, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. <laughs> There is uh, one memorable trip, it was in the early 90s. I took my Brazilian in-laws over, completely forgetting that it was another country. And the Irish customs stopped and said, you do need passports. He said, oh, and you need visas. And I said, oh, ah, go on. <laughs> and so we had a lovely day in Dublin, thank you. The connection with Holyhead and Ireland is very, very strong. We have Welsh, we have the Irish, we have English, we have Scots, we have Northern Irish, we have Dutch, the Dutch Navy was stationed there in the Second World War. We have Indonesians, we have Kazakhs nowadays, we have Russians, we have uh, a multinational uh, population, but it's still only 15,000, so uh, you can still go to any of them and ask for a cup of sugar. I heard guns, not a foghorn one morn, the day's face in the cloud of a frown, the speed of a torpedo, the crash of a hull, it came and it sang blow the man down, but above, the boats in the wind, Cledachin wind, tracing the track on the back of a monster, a life anew for you, or dancing the jigs to the horns of ships, a scouse terrace with a different view. Nay, Aros and Gumri, or Dan at our Hallen, our Gulioch or Song, I get a V. My ech mordaith wedi bod and here, so stay here and melt to the sea. I grew up in Holyhead and I write about Holyhead and the surrounding area, so Anglesey. Gwynedd, um, and for me Holyhead's a really inspiring place, uh, which is why I'm here. A Holyhead's relationship to Ireland is really special. I think most people who live in Holyhead identify with Irish people. We feel connected, they're a little bit like part of our community and that's not because they pass through it. Um, as you grow up, you know, there are pubs here, there are cafes here, you sit in a pub, you can happily have a chat with someone that's stopping over for you know an hour or two um, interesting relationships happen it doesn't feel like two countries actually in this port it feels like we're together Irish and Welsh the thing that's interesting about Holyhead is, is its sort of geography and the fact that it's an island off another island off another island so it feels that in parts there's there's mysteries in the land and it's got this great big mountain that, that watches over us all I feel like it takes care of us. It definitely plays a part in the way I write. Um, and you can't help, uh, when you live on an island, if you're a writer, if you're a poet, you can't help but write about the sea. So yes, definitely. Uh, spending so much time with my family on beaches, running on the sand, climbing up rocks, that's definitely played a part in, in, in grown up me. Leaving the bay of my lover's outstretched arms, propelled purposely and speedily, as if from the slingshot set between pool bags, redundant yet robust towers. Sensing the rumbling, rotating revolutions of engines below, surging up to the hulking force beneath, rising up through you as you move towards whatever destiny deems to be yours. Places visited now disappearing dismally, as if in a black and white showreel of summer's past. No anger, only angst reflecting in the water on what might have been if home had been another place. Unemployment lines of dull desperation determined your fate. A faraway fate denying freedom to fearful feminists, young but brave enough and scared enough to take this boat to furt of surreptitious places and practices, seeking a way to end something before it begins to take hold of lives unprepared and resourceful enough to provide traversing troubled times and waters to leave forever or return in silence, exile and cunning. 
For good news travels fast, disaster more daring, it dashes ahead. This boat is a lifeline no matter how often we must come and go. As with our river and sea, it ebbs and flows, it comes it and goes, connecting our futures, our pasts, our friends, our foes. <laughs>